Welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to talk about the mid and long tail keyword research, specifically the different data sources that we can get at to tackle these types of keywords and also which tools can do this for us to save us time and make the whole thing a lot easier. Jumping back into our search demand curve, we're now going to be primarily dealing with this huge long tail of keywords. So in context to the kind of search terms we've looked at, things like what are the best jigsaws for adults? So it's usually really long specific search terms. We'll also be moving up just maybe into the kind of tail end of the mid, but for me, this is one of the most exciting keyword areas because this is, depending on the data you look at, between 70-80% of all searches fall into this long tail category. Now, in terms of how this relates to our websites, we looked at this before. We've got our homepage, we've got our maybe our main menu kind of categories, and then we've got sort of subcategories which are clustering various topics. This is really what the keyword research we're going to do is going to be affecting where we're going to be putting it on our site. So these kind of mid or higher long tail terms will determine what topics we're really writing about or what subtopics we're writing about. And the real long tail questions generally are involved with the article level. So you've decided you're going to write about this specific topic and you're trying to work out what questions should we answer? What are people interested in when they're reading about this? This is going to be the majority of your keyword research. So it's a super important area. When we're looking at these kinds of keywords, there are two main types of keyword data we're interested in. The first is Google Suggest. So if I do a search for puppy training, before I hit return, you're going to see these auto completions here. And now all of these are a type of data we refer to as Google Suggest. So they are suggesting what else someone might search for after they have typed this query. Now, interestingly, if you put a space and then say letter A, you'll get all of the queries beginning with A after this, B, C, D. You can see all the way through the alphabet, this is one way to get hold of lots of information. But obviously that's quite a manual approach. We'll look at tools that can do this for you. But Google Suggest is a really good way of getting an overview of these topics. The other type of data is a bit more specific, more long tail. And if we actually conduct the search, on around 50% of searches, you will see this people also ask data. So what this is telling us is if someone does a search for puppy training, these are very likely going to be close proximity questions that they are going to ask. And if you actually click on these questions, they concertina out and you get even more related questions to the one you've clicked on and this continues almost forever and as you can imagine it's again quite a large manual task to try and collate these so we'll look at tools that can do this for you. The key concept I want you to take away from this is that the two different types of data Google suggest data and people also ask data are used for different things generally your Google suggest data is your bird's eye view of what should we be writing about. Your people also ask data is what should be included in that article or I should say in that piece of content because strictly as you know it doesn't have to be text content it could be a video it could be a podcast but these are the two levels you're working at with these two different types of data from Google. Now as I said, it can be quite hard to manually get this data from Google, very time consuming. So there are several tools that can help us speed up this process and save us literally hours and hours and hours of time. They tend to be focused on one of those two specific types of data. So we'll look at Answer Socrates and Answer the Public for Google Suggest data. And we'll look at People Also Ask data with our tool Also Asked. Now, Google Suggest data is actually very easy to access. I've actually written a Google Colab script, which will allow you to do this for free. I will put the link in the resources for this lecture, but you can go to this script and press play. And all that will happen is it will run in your browser. You don't need to do anything special. And once it's run, you will simply be asked to enter a search query. So we'll use our puppy training one again here and then you press return and what this will do for you is it's now going away googling and it's filling in like we did earlier 
manually all of the kind of ABCs and it's asking questions like versus and why and can and it's actually returning hundreds of results just around puppy training in a very short amount of time. There's a little link here as well to download a CSV and if you click on that it will give you in your downloads a comma separated value file here that will show you all of the Google suggest completions, the questions, the how questions, where versus for. So it gives you a really nice instant bird's eye view. Now, CSV isn't always the best way to present this data depending who you're working with. So we're gonna look as well at some of the tools available. Because Google Suggest data is quite easy to access, there are some tools that will do this for you for free as well. So Answer Socrates is one of these. So if I pop in the term puppy training, this tool also allows us to specify the region and language. And if you hit search, it will try and get that data for you. Now I tried Answer Socrates just before recording this video and it was actually throwing up an error. Yeah, this exact error here. And I wanted to include that to you know, let you know, to be honest, that free tools, while they are great, are generally more unreliable because there's no motivation, there's no money to keep them well maintained. So this isn't an uncommon thing. You know, so if you don't have any budget, there are tools like this. If you do have budget, it is always worth, even if it's a small amount, investing in a tool that's a bit more reliable. An example of this is Answer the Public. So Answer the Public, again, gives you three searches per day for free if you sign up, which is free. And if I pop the same term in here, so puppy training, again, region language selection and hit search, this is going to go and get that Google Suggest data for me. The other thing that I really like about this tool is it does give you these visualizations. This is particularly helpful if you're working with non-technical people or content writers. It can be a little bit easier for them to digest. But you have got the option of downloading the data as well. And this does something very similar to my script, which is just doing the alphabet, different prepositions, comparisons, etc. And lastly, also asked uh, is very similar in terms of it's a freemium model. So you can have three free searches per day without registering. And if you want to use more than this or the more advanced features, you can get a paid account. So if we search for something more specific now, so puppy training games, so we've decided this is what we're going to write our article about. Again, you can choose the language and region. And if you hit search, it's going to mine all of these people also ask questions and then give you an idea that, okay, if you're writing about puppy training games, you probably want to include some information about how to keep it fun for your puppy. You might want to include some specifics around how old they are as a puppy when you do various games, and then actually list different types of games you can play. And then if you're writing about each of these topics, you can go even deeper. So once you're writing about what type of games you should play as a puppy, maybe you should look at how long those games should last and if um, if the puppy's happy doing it. But this is the kind of data um, you want to get for this article level. And again, with the paid version of Also Asked, you can download this as a CSV. And even in the free version, you can download the PNG image of these. So it's nice and easy to share with someone that's producing your content for you. Things that I think are worth refreshing about these two data sources or bringing to your attention are for Google Suggest data, a lot of the time you will get search volume data, i.e. it will say, yes, there's 100 searches a month maybe for this term. And that's because we are kind of going into these mid-middle search terms with Google Suggest data a lot of the time. Whereas with People Also Ask data, almost exclusively, Keyword research tools will tell you there is zero searches per month for those long tail questions. Now, that's not strictly correct. It just means they don't have data. And in a couple of videos time, there will be a very lengthy video about effective zero volume keyword research and how it's actually one of the things that catches out a lot of SEOs and causes a lot of strategic mistakes that cost them a lot of traffic. So hold on for that one. The next thing I want to mention is actually the Google Suggest data is fairly easy to access. As you heard in our resources section, there's a Google Colab script that just uses the API. So it's nice and easy to get that data from Google. 
People also ask data, on the other hand, there's no API Google provides to programmatically access this data. This means the only way to get it is to scrape it yourself, either through your browser. Um, there's a lot of issues with doing that. Google doesn't like you doing it. It can quite easily block you for doing that. It's very hard to get accurate results for different languages and regions unless you pay to use a VPN as Google will customize or personalize rather your results depending on the region it thinks you're doing the search from. So it can actually be quite difficult to do, which is again another reason to use a tool to get this valuable data. And lastly, really, really importantly, so I wanted to finish on it, the Google Suggest data has no clustering. And what I mean by that is the results you are getting returned from Google from the tools are simply based on the root keyword that you've put in and two suggestions you get from that may not actually really be related to each other. They certainly may not even need to appear in the same article and they may be actually totally different topics in some cases. People also ask data on the other hand is very laser focused. So when you put in a query, the results, the other questions you get back sometimes don't even contain the initial question or keywords that you asked. And that's because they're based on this type of clustering where Google knows they're just close by searches. So there's pros and cons to both, but with PAA data, it means those are the questions that are close in intent and likely you need to include in an article, whereas suggest data tends to be more broad. And lastly, as a challenge, just load up some of these tools, answer Socrates, try the Google Colab script, try also ask and put in some of the keywords that you want to rank for or maybe that you've got content ranking for and see if you're answering all of the questions, see if you're missing things out in your menu. You'll probably be surprised at the sort of obvious things you're missing. So you'll put in a keyword and you're like, oh, of course, yeah, we totally forgot to cover that. It's a really, really powerful way to start making your content better. So just have a play around with that and we'll look at some more focused usage in the coming lectures. One of the most important things to take away from this lecture is the different types of data and understanding their uses. And that's probably what we're going to have our kind of quiz questions on later in the course. Tools come and go, tools change, tools are there to make your life easier and quicker. But the real thing you need to understand is how to use the data. So we're going to dive in in all these coming up lectures about how to apply it in different circumstances.